today we're going to be talking about how to calculate the derivative of an inverse trig function, in particular the function here that we've written for y. And because we have two arc cotangent functions involved in our function here, we've gone ahead and written the formula for the derivative of arc cotangent. When, you're, when we're talking about the formulas for any inverse trig functions, it's important to remember that the x that you have inside of your inverse trig function here is going to be the same as the x in the formula over here on the right hand side. So what that means is, for example, in the second part of our original function, when we have 1 divided by x inside of our arc cotangent function, that means that in our formula, we're going to put 1 divided by x in place of x here. So let's go ahead and take the derivative and see what this looks like. So our derivative function, y prime, will be equal to arc cotangent of x, we have the exact formula for, there's nothing different we have to do, so that's just negative 1 divided by 1 plus x squared. For arc cotangent of 1 divided by x, we'll do the same thing here, we have negative 1 divided by 1 plus, but in place of x here, we'll put what we have inside of this arc cotangent function, which is 1 divided by x, so 1 divided by x, and we'll square that. The other thing we have to remember is that whenever we have anything other than x inside of our arc cotangent function, we need to multiply the by the derivative of the inside function. So that's a chain rule application, right? Chain rule tells us that we take the derivative of our outside function first, so we take the derivative of cotangent, ignoring what's on the inside. So we just took the derivative of the outside function here, leaving the inside function completely alone. But now we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function here. So the derivative of 1 divided by x is negative 1 over x squared. And the way that we know that, remember, is that 1 over x is the same as x to the negative 1. We can use power rule then and say that the derivative of that is negative x to the negative 2, and when we conver convert that back to a fraction, moving x to the negative 2 to the denominator to make the exponent positive, we get negative 1 over x squared. So we multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Now our derivative is just a matter of simplifying what we have here as much as possible. So in order to do that, we'll first simplify the second part of this function, so we have a negative sign and a negative sign, so those will cancel one another and become positive signs. Here, in our denominator, we have this x squared term, so we'll say x squared times the quantity that we have here, 1 plus 1 over x squared, so we're going to get 1 plus 1 over x squared. And when we simplify that denominator further, we'll distribute the x squared across these two terms. x squared times 1 is just x squared. x squared times 1 over x squared, we get the x squared terms to cancel, and we're just left with 1. So notice now that we have the same two fractions here. We just got the denominators in reverse order, but 1 plus x squared is obviously the same as x, x squared plus 1. We have a negative term and a positive term, which means that we're actually going to get a result here of 0. So that means that our derivative is y prime is equal to 0 because this negative fraction here cancels with its opposite positive term. These two go away and we're left with zero. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.